Here are some of the craziest things Michael Jackson actually owned. Wait until you hear the real story about Michael and his hyperbaric chamber. Number 12, Edward Scissorhands. How much stuff does someone have to be on to come up with a story of a dude with scissors for hands? And who are the execs who actually said, okay, to this project? Well, apparently when Tim Burton comes calling and he gets Johnny Depp to sign on, any idea is good. The risk paid off because the film made almost $90 million on a budget of $20 million. Edward Scissorhands came straight out of Tim Burton's imagination. Surprisingly, the story of a guy with scissors for hands was something people were into. Unsurprisingly, the movie also won the Academy Awards for Best Makeup, and Michael was one of the people who loved Edward Scissorhands. And when he's someone with a bank account that had a lot of commas, he bought the iconic scissor gloves right away. Allegedly, Michael had expressed interest in playing Edward Scissorhands, but Tim Burton wasn't having it. To be honest, it would have been a totally different movie. Number 11, Macaulay Culkin Collectibles. If there's one person with Macaulay Culkin collectibles, that person would have to be Michael Jackson. You guys remember Home Alone? That's what made Macaulay Culkin a household name, just in case you didn't know. Guess how much money Home Alone grossed? $476 million, and it only cost $18 million to make. It might have been a little weird for most people since there was a 22 year age difference between Michael and Macaulay Culkin, but Macaulay Culkin did come out and say that Michael was one of his, quote, legit best friends. He said that Michael was his best friend for a stretch of his life growing up. And no, Culkin said nothing weird happened between them. Just like any good friend, he was supportive of Culkin's professional endeavors. Apparently, he used to pay whatever money was charged for Home Alone collectibles. He bought signed tapes, posters, and even a finger painting by Macaulay Culkin as a sign of their friendship. Number 10, Batsuit Michael. DC Comics fans unite! Or is that something only Marvel fans are supposed to say? Anyways, the greatest pop icon was a big Batman fan. He was such a huge fan that if it wasn't for his tough concert commitments and busy schedules, he would have definitely worked as a music composer and singer for the iconic 1989 Batman movie. He even expressed his desire to play the Riddler in the 1995 Batman Forever movie. So it really shouldn't surprise you by him showing his love for the Batman franchise with a statue of Batman with him underneath the mask. A little weird, maybe? Or is this just Michael being Michael? Here's another interesting story. According to Stan Lee, in the 90s, Michael wanted to buy the rights to Spider-Man. Why? Just so he could star as Spider-Man in a Spider-Man movie. Number nine, Hyde Piper Michael. Michael Jackson was a global star, and for a lot of his life, he was probably the most famous celebrity at that time. However, Michael was still quite mysterious. In case you didn't know, he also used to love shopping. He would roam around museums and expensive auctions in order to find expensive stuff that he could buy. The paintings he collected were collectively valued at a whopping $900 million. However, there was one oil painting he owned that definitely turned some heads. It was a painting of Michael Jackson himself leading a group of kids somewhere, just like the Pied Piper. The painting was basically the Pied Piper as Michael Jackson. Let's just say it's not a good look considering all the stories that came out about Michael. Well, at least in Michael's mind, he was doing good for the world, and it shows here that he wanted to portray that in a painting. Number eight, Michael Jackson robotic head. Well, Michael Jackson might have thought of himself being something of a Tony Stark guy because he had a robotic head made to look like him. Obviously, Tony Stark's head armor or robotic head was a lot more relevant and didn't look like his face on the outside. So why does this head exist? This robotic head was inspired by his movie Moonwalker. Well, it's hard to call Moonwalker a movie because there's kind of no plot. We won't even bother saying spoiler alert because there is no spoiler. Here's basically what happens. Michael turns into a robot, defeats some enemies, and then turns into a spaceship and flies away. Did that make sense to you? Yeah, it didn't to us either. Legend has it that whenever this movie is watched by someone, Christopher Nolan cries in the corner. Amazingly, the VHS of Moonwalker was number one on Billboard's video chart for a whopping 22 weeks. Number seven, King Michael. Apparently, Michael having himself painted was a thing. He had a lot of different paintings of himself, and this one was of himself dressed as a king. Maybe it showed how obsessed he was with his success and how he considered himself to be the undisputed king of the music world. 
Or maybe he just had the mindset of being a king and it wasn't about his success nor material wealth. There is a big difference, but that's a different story. This particular painting was signed by Michael Jackson himself back in 1995. Apparently, back in the day, the walls of his Neverland Ranch were adorned with many quiche, self-mythologizing portraits of himself. Let's take a look at some of these other crazy paintings of himself. Here's one of him as a knight, and another one of him on another horse. Yeah, Michael liked paintings of himself. Number 6. The White Glove Everyone probably remembers Michael with a white glove on. Well, that and some other things, such as his red leather jacket or white socks or even the fedora. His one white sequin glove is probably THE Michael trademark, and it's really its own thing. He's worn the glove in countless concerts, shows, and music videos, but why? No doubt the glove was expensive, but it was apparently something that meant a lot to Michael. Allegedly, he first started wearing the white glove because it hid his skin condition. Apparently, a vitiligo first affected Michael on his right hand. And that's how Michael became known as the gloved one and why he owned a sequined white glove. Well, he probably had a bunch of them because who wants to wear the same sweaty glove? Number five, Stretch Rolls Royce. Okay, we don't need to go into all the expensive cars that Michael had because that would be tedious and kind of boring. But we do have to highlight this particular car since it's a ridiculously styled Stretch Rolls Royce limo. It makes sense that Michael wanted to ride in style, but just how much drip did he want to have? The interior looks like it's part of a Versace collection. A lot of 24 karat gold, white leather, and walnut accents. Basically, it's a rolling palace of Versailles. The crazy thing is, he didn't have just this one stretch limo, but he had four more. How many stretch limos does someone need? This reminds us of athletes going broke, and Michael supposedly was deep in debt. Find out the reasons why this happens to athletes all the time in this video. Number 4. Peter Pan Michael Golf Cart Like we said before, Michael liked to paint himself, and that extended to golf carts. Oh yeah, he also liked Peter Pan, so he painted himself in a Peter Pan on a golf cart. Why? Well, Michael said that he related to Peter Pan. Michael never had a childhood, so he never had the chance to be a kid. Peter Pan was a kid who never grew up, and it seems like Michael just wanted to always be like a kid. Jackson turned his home to Neverland Ranch, of course, that was named after Peter Pan's home of Never Neverland. His obsession with Peter Pan and all things kids related had the media saying Jackson had Peter Pan syndrome. Yeah, this golf cart didn't help. Number 3. Michael and Friends Can paintings get any weirder? Not with Michael. This painting is just hard to describe. It can be really weird, really funny, really strange, or even just really cool. He had a painting made of himself with icons such as Mona Lisa, Albert Einstein, and Abraham Lincoln. And they're all wearing sunglasses and his trademark one glove. Why was this made? Who knows? We're still trying to figure out why he put E.T. on there. Was E.T. really that influential? Number 2. Hyperbaric Chamber You guys know what a hyperbaric oxygen chamber is, right? Basically, it's a pressurized tube where someone breathes in pure oxygen. It's normally used for decompression sickness. That's an illness someone gets when they go from one pressurization environment into another way too quickly. The machine cures the condition by reducing the size of gas bubbles in the patient's blood. Michael had supposedly uh, had a different motive with the hyperbaric chamber. He wanted to live for as long as he could, and he used a lot of different methods to slow down his aging process. Allegedly, Michael had said, quote, I believe if I treat my body properly, I'll live to be at least 150. So was this one of the therapies Michael tried to use to extend his life? Did he even own one at all? In a 1993 interview with Oprah, Michael Jackson flat out said that he had never had an oxygen chamber in his house. He said that the chamber that he's seen in was for his charity, the Michael Jackson Burn Center. He basically said it was a stupid rumor that was completely made up and he was actually embarrassed about it. It's probably safe to say that Michael actually never owned a hyperbaric chamber since he's on tape saying it. Number 1. Mannequins Okay, mannequins has to be up there for the weirdest things Michael owned, especially when the mannequins are of kids. Yeah, the discovery of various mannequins of kids in one of his rooms at his ranch didn't exactly help his reputation. Why were some of these mannequins seated together like they're in a conversation? Why were other ones propped up like they're in a weird yoga pose? What exactly were the mannequins used for? Watch this next video to find out about the real reason why athletes go broke. 